record, okay? Okay, welcome to mm -hmm. Cherish Women's Ministries Loving Well Initiative. And tonight our focus is on loving well in community. And I just want to welcome my friend Kim and also mm -hmm. my friend Melody Metcalf. Mm -hmm. Oh, she is here with us okay. tonight. We're all in our own homes. It's all cozy, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just want to do um, the verse John 13, 34 says, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must, must love one another. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. We just want to um, share real stories and have our friends share real stories about loving well. So I'm so excited for tonight. All right, Kim, would you open us up in prayer? Absolutely, I will. So Father, we just thank you so much for um, your love. Um, we would not be able to love at all if it weren't for you implanting your love in us and um, embracing us as individuals and as a group with your love. And so we just wanna honor you tonight. We wanna honor the fact that you love us, that you are faithful, that you are good. I thank you for Melody and for her story and for the rich, richness of um, what you have done in her life and how you have touched others through her father. And so I pray that tonight, um, what we hear would touch the hearts of those who will hear it online and that um, other people will be encouraged to just obey you, to just do what they can, to love other people and love them well. Um, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, Melody is a transplant, right, Melody, from California. Yeah. We are so happy to have her in Idaho. Yes. And um, I got a chance before all of this, um, you know, crazy stuff to be able to have coffee with her. And God just kind of led me to that. And she said yes. And we had a great time. Um, and I got to hear her story. And so we're going to hear a little bit of that today and how she loved well in her community down there in California. Yeah, because I haven't heard any of it. So I'm, this will be a first for me. So I'm excited. Okay. Well, I think when I, when I start uh, talking about what God has done in my life, I need to go way back. And, you know, I don't want to make this a retrospective of my whole life. But um, I had a family that lived down the street from me when I was a little girl and I grew up in a very secular home in a broken home in a home um, where my dad was mafia connected and in wow. the bar business and you know there was a lot of strange stuff going on in our home and um, a family down the street whose uh, daughter was in first grade with me they invited me to Sunday school with them and they took me to church where I just, you know, loved the atmosphere and mm -hmm. could feel the presence of God. And they took me every Sunday of my childhood. Mm -hmm. And so they loved me. Mm -hmm. That was them reaching out to their community. That's great. And loving me, taking this little girl to church, mm -hmm. and, you know, who didn't know how to act or any of that. Mm -hmm. And because of them, I accepted Jesus when I was seven years old in mm. children's church yeah. and that was the church being Yay. Christ to an outsider yeah, yeah it was really awesome and and so i i grew up with you know knowing scripture and and going to camp and having those big experiences mm. and they really loved me into the kingdom and the reason that that's important is because then there was a period in my life, you know, I, I went to Bible college. Um, I was a double major with music and Bible religious studies. Mm -hmm. And um, I went into opera. I became an opera singer. Mm -hmm. That was my music part. And that was a really secular field and even though yeah. i was a christian i kind of got gobbled up by some of the attitudes and some of you know the looking down the nose at christian sure. belief and all of that mm -hmm. and so um my christian mm -hmm. faith kind of wavered there for a while i i you know went around the back door a little bit let's say 
but the Lord was always working on me, making sure that, you know, the, the things that I learned as a child were part of who I was. And so um, after working for quite a number of years as a professional singer, it, I, my husband and I, we met in Bible college. Mm -hmm. uh, we finally decided it was time to have our family. And during that time, uh, we struggled and struggled and I couldn't have children. We found out mm -hmm. there were some issues with me. Yeah. And so I ended up going um, to, to, through two surgeries and that was to correct some of the medical issues I had. Mm -hmm. And what happened was um, in one of those surgeries, there was a big error that nearly cost mm. me my life. Wow. And I was in bed for a year mm. after that. Oh my. And during that year, that was the time where I realized, you know, I, I was in fact a Christian, mm -hmm. but I really had very little to show for my walk with the Lord, very mm -hmm. little. I felt like I had escaped that so closely. And if I had died during that surgical mishap, I would have had nothing to show for my life, nothing of value that would last, nothing to take with me, you know, through the gates yeah. of heaven. And, and what a sad thing that mm -hmm. is. And so that became a crossroads for me. And, during that time, somebody sent me a card that had the words to Jeremiah 11, a scripture a lot of us know, right? Mm -hmm. I know the plans I have for you, mm -hmm. says yeah. the Lord. And I thought, Lord, I had plans of becoming a mom. I had plans of being an opera singer. I had mm -hmm. a lot of plans. And I don't know what those plans are going to, you know, how they're going to play out now. They seem mm -hmm. like they have been shipwrecked. But yeah. you say you have plans for me, mm. plans for good and not for evil, for a future and a hope, you know, to be prosperous. Mm -hmm. And I had to hang on for a whole year to mm. that scripture and say, Lord, what are you up to? Mm. And at the end of that year, I was talking to a good Christian friend and saying, you know, now I just want to do whatever the Lord wants. I don't care about my own plans. Let him be yeah. in the driver's seat. If he'll, but if he'll just tell me what he wants, I'll go do it. And yeah. she, she reminded me, no, that's mm -hmm. not how God works. We have to depend on him. He's not going to give us the whole roadmap. And so yeah. I started living a different way, you know, mm -hmm. and really letting God lead my path, in, mm -hmm. even if it took me into unexpected places. And it yeah. did. Because I was not well mm -hmm. enough to go back into singing at that mm -hmm. point. So I became a substitute teacher in Los Angeles Unified School District. And oh, because wow. I was brand new and they didn't know me and you know there were thousands of substitute teachers, they kept sending me to the worst schools that were in gang territory. Oh, wow. And <clears throat> you know, I kind of woke up every morning and said, what's a nice girl like me doing in a place like this? <laughs> and, and it was really, uh, you know, what they would call a war zone school. Wow. And I ended up taking a contract at this little middle school in the middle of the barrio with, you know, um, people being trafficked up and down the streets mm. and, you know, little hourly hotels right across from the school and drug deals going on in front of the school. Gang members were picking up these junior high kids from school because their parents mm. were working two and three jobs. And you know what? I fell in love with those kids. Mm. Yeah. I started to fall in love with them. And one day um, mm. I was in my classroom putting up bulletin boards and I felt like the Lord said to me, you are never going to have children of your own, but you will have spiritual babies. Mm. And at that moment, I didn't really mm. understand that. I just, heard it and mm -hmm. kept going. And as time went on and I saw more and more of the brokenness in the community, some of my favorite students had horrible traumas going on at home. They looked, they saw murders. Um, mm. They, you know, they were going on drive-by shootings and all kinds of things were go going on in that school. And after I taught in mm -hmm. that school and I had the blessing of having an assistant in my class who was a prayer warrior mm -hmm. and we 
pray right. for those kids every day. It was yeah. really awesome. And they started to feel like they were becoming my kids, my kids. My heart was so filled with love for them. And after not quite four years in that school, I decided to start an after school program. And it was just a little kind of a hokey little thing, just like, a, you know, okay, students, I'm going to be down the street at three o'clock on Friday afternoon in a church, a little mm -hmm. Hispanic church, open their doors to me. Great. And we're going to have refreshments and we're going to have fun. And if you come, you know, I'll give you a cookie. And that was about <laughs> all it was. And, and my assistant came with me and we sort of started, you know, children's church or young mm -hmm. life sort of, gangster young life you know yeah. <laughs> and and we thought you know isn't this cute that they're coming and hanging out with their son, their school teacher and yeah. we thought you know this will last a few weeks and then yeah. we'll be done with it and those kids those middle school kids came for five solid years until oh, they wow. graduated from high school and then we thought you know well i guess we're done well yeah. then their little brothers mm -hmm. came and their little sisters came and pretty soon we ended up mm -hmm. receiving a little grant and one thing led to another and we started a full-on <laughs> with five days a week after school and then a few years later we were doing prison ministry wow and then a few years later we started a church mm. and then a few years after that we started work study programs and a few years after that we started a charter school wow for high school dropouts because we had a dropout rate in that community of 76 percent. oh my goodness Wow. So there was a huge wow. population that was not prepared to go into the workforce. Yeah. And they were young moms and dads. And so we started mm -hmm. a program where they could graduate with a full diploma up to age 26. And wow. we had a beautiful Christian staff who poured into the lives mm -hmm. of these young people in our school mm -hmm. at one time had 150 students. Wow. And we had multiple yeah. ministries going on and on. And then um, my husband and I adopted four of those kids into our personal family. Wow. And, <clears throat> and so, you know, we ended up, we ended up with children. We ended yeah. up with a family and we have grandkids now. And, hmm. and I want to go back to that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, yeah. because so often we take it out of context. We do. If, if you go back a few verses, what it says is, you know, that it was written to the exiles who were taken away captive where they didn't want to be, which was kind of mm -hmm. like my life. I did not want to be at a gang territory school. I wanted to be singing. Right. But the Lord took me there. It wasn't exactly an exile, but it felt like it. Yeah. And, and the verse, starting with verse 5, it says put down roots mm -hmm. do, do what you need to do build houses plant vineyards plan to be here because if mm -hmm. you seek the welfare of the city where i've taken you yeah. in that welfare in that shalom you will find your welfare and your shalom and so the lord tells us even if we end up someplace we don't want to be he is going to give us the desires mm -hmm. of our heart as we obey him in that mm -hmm. place. And so I have to yeah. really say for 20 years of doing what started out as going into a school, I, you know, I didn't really want to be in, but I said, Lord, where are you leading me today? Mm -hmm. The Lord mm -hmm. healed my heart and healed mm -hmm. my life. And, yeah. you know, if I look all the way back, there were people who were faithful to the Lord to take this little scraggly girl to Sunday school with them. Mm -hmm. They reached out to outsiders. And now the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, many, many years later, gave me a chance to reach to outsiders and to see literally hundreds hundreds yeah. of 
inner city kids come to the Lord mm. as a result of his faithfulness. So I, I just love that because I think wherever we are, the Lord will use us, even if it's a place we didn't expect to be. And, yeah. you know, here we are, all of us in our homes because of coronavirus, mm -hmm. you know? And I was also thinking mm -hmm. about um, the prophet Joel wrote in hard times in, yeah. in his world. And he said, the Lord will restore to you the years that the mm -hmm. locust have eaten. Yeah. And, and I can see in my own life when I felt like everything was lost, mm -hmm. my COVID my health was lost my motherhood was lost mm. and yet the lord restored over yeah you know exceedingly abundantly above yeah. what i can ask or imagine yeah i think we get wow. off track with that jeremiah 29 11 because we we think we forget that it says for i know the plans i have for you you know not I know the plans that you have for you, even though he does. Yeah. And I think I know, Lord, what I want you to do for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. So I love that you said that about that verse. Yeah, that's great, and that you referred to what was before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> well, there, you know, there was so many. I want to add here yeah. is today, you know, yeah, yeah, my husband ahead. and I have moved to Idaho mm -hmm. just less than a year ago, mm -hmm. which we love it here. Thank you, mm -hmm. Idaho, for accepting us in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, <laughs> we love it so much. But now I'm a hospice chaplain. And it's very interesting to me because sometimes people say, you know, how can you be a hospice chaplain or how can you work with gang kids? And mm. I think, you know, it goes back to what so many people say, um, the Lord doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Yeah. Yeah. And w really I'm able oh, yeah. to relate to people because I was a patient in bed for a year. Mm -hmm. you know, I know what it is yeah. to be sick and I just, share the lord's faithfulness mm -hmm. wherever they're ready to hear it and yes. and i just think it's important that we know that as christians we are not here to just be filled up we right. are here to fulfill the work that the lord wants to mm -hmm. do and he's given everybody an ability to do something yeah. and a and a um a platform wherever we are mm -hmm. to speak into somebody's life that's so beautiful. And I don't think you ever would have said as that little girl, um, I'm going to be an opera singer. Maybe you would have said that. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm going to love gang kids and I'm going to work in this school where people are shooting outside and one night stands and trafficked and all those things. I don't think you probably would have thought that, but it's so cool to see how early on in your life was interrupted by yeah. people that love Jesus. Right. And what maybe that was simple for those people at that time. Maybe it, it was hard. I don't know. Um, but that started. That started yeah. that trajectory mm -hmm. as you went along, right? Yeah. And and, and then the the yeah, go ahead. I was go just ahead. gonna say Sarah, what were you gonna say? those those people are still in my life. Mm -hmm. My classmate from first grade oh. and, and um, mm -hmm. her mom, I spoke to them this week. You know, they're just still uh, in my life. And in fact, in the years, the, the 20 years that we ran Cloud and Fire, our ministry, their extended family all planted funds into our work. And, you know, wow. they, they got mm -hmm. to see the fulfillment of the seeds that they planted come to fruition. That's great. That's amazing. Oh, that is so yeah. powerful. And I love that name too. Was that your church? I forgot. Was that the name of your church or what it was, was the it? overall or ministry? School? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was the overall organization it was called cloud and fire. And the reason we called it that is because, you know, 
during that time when I did, I didn't know what the Lord's plans were for me. Mm -hmm. I just had to say, Lord, I have to follow you one day's journey at a time. Yeah. Like the Israelites did, you know, cloud by day, fire by night, let's mm -hmm. just follow the Lord up. And then you look over your shoulder after a while and you go, we have come a long ways. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting yeah. somewhere. And what, what was the name of the, of the charter school that you started? It was, um, it was originally called Youth Build, and then mm -hmm. we changed it to Cloud and Fire Charter School. Oh, okay. That's how oh. all the kids referred to it. They didn't, they didn't want a different name. They just wanted Cloud and Fire. That's awesome. That's so cool. So what would you say, what would you say to somebody right now who finds themselves like in your same situation where they're, where those dreams and those hopes have been like totally like swept out the door and they find themselves in that waiting period and they might not be sick, you know, they might not be bedridden, <clears throat> but what would you say to them right now, given kind of being on the other side um, of what God's plan was, what would you say to them? I love that you said, Lord, what are you up to? Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. Well, I think first of all, Kim, um, we have to just acknowledge that when you're in God's waiting room, mm -hmm. that is one of the most miserable places. Yeah. It can be terrifying because you don't know what's coming. Yeah. It can feel like it's a dead end. It can feel like life is over. Yeah. And that is heavy. And I, I yeah. just want to validate that for anybody who's in that kind of place. Mm -hmm. it, it is so difficult. Yeah. And yet it's a place where we can put God to the test. And mm -hmm. I don't mean that in a defiant way. Right. But, but like, like we test something in order to prove its validity. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. really to mm -hmm. test the the gold that's mm -hmm. there you know when it may look um it may look like it's something else and to wait and see god's faithfulness we can say lord i have no idea what is next i am so desperate i'm at the end yeah. and if we can just mm -hmm. keep taking one more breath mm -hmm. you know and really survive we mm -hmm. can find such amazing things in in proverbs it says he took us out into a broad place you know sometimes when we're in that narrow narrow squeezing mm -hmm. place it feels so hard but just around the corner it can open up but you have to keep going and that's a hard thing and <clears throat> sometimes what it what it really needs is what we're doing here which is surrounding ourselves with people who've gone through it, who can just encourage yeah. us and say, don't give up. You're not at the end. This is not a period. Mm -hmm. This is a comma. Right. Yeah. This is the semicolon. Mm -hmm. This is not the end of the sentence. Yeah. 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 I think that's so great. Good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Go ahead, Kim. No, I was just going to reiterate that. I think it's, it's good for people to know that um, it's okay to be where you are. Um, it's, it's okay to be in a place of just, I have no idea what's happening. Um, I have no idea what's around the corner. I'm, I'm not happy <laughs> about having to be here, but um, I think, and Sarah and I've kind of been through similar situations, you know, um, not with illness, but with, with other issues in our lives. And God gave us each other to help each other through that and um, to share with each other along the way. And I can't imagine where either one of us would be. We definitely wouldn't be talking to you online on a Zoom meeting, you know, getting ready to post it <laughs> on Facebook. We would never be doing this. You know, if yeah. you talk to us no. four years ago, we would say, what? No, we won't be doing that. That would be just too scary. <laughs> you know, I think loss I is the great teacher. 
loss is the great teacher. I don't, I don't remember who said this. It feels like it might've been Corey Ten Boom. Mm. Someone uh, said, you know, that, that um, you don't know the Lord is, oh, may, maybe I'm going to misquote it. That's okay. When you, when the Lord is all you have, mm. that's when you know that that's all you need. Yeah. And I, right. I think I said that wrong, but you get yeah. the idea. And, and I, I yeah. see the Lord deepens us. Mm -hmm. The Lord deepens us when we mm -hmm. go on this kind of a quest into loneliness and loss mm -hmm. and hardship. And, yeah. and that is when um, his character comes out in us, you know, and sometimes it's through those most desperate mm -hmm. times. Yeah. And, and the Lord shapes mm -hmm. his people then, I think. Don't mm -hmm. you think so? Haven't you found uh, that? Yeah. In your lives? Well, it's... Yes. It's, and yeah. you mentioned... Go ahead, Sarah. There you go. No, that's was, fine. Okay. There's always... Yeah. There's always gold in the valley, you know, and, and I always say, I don't want to waste suffering. Right. It, if I'm going to go through a time of suffering, and I believe that's where God uh, really works, um, even though I, don't, mm -hmm. I prefer he use a different way, yeah. but um, <laughs> I don't want to the gold. Like I want to mine it, you know, when I'm there. And mm -hmm. and you didn't want to go through suffering. Yeah. Um, Kim and I, <laughs> nobody wants to suffer. Yeah. And people are suffering right now. And nobody wants to be there. But I, I love what you said, though, about the gold and, and getting the gold out of it. And when you're in that place that, um, like when you were sick, you couldn't, get out of that at that time you were stuck in that waiting time sometimes we're stuck in those waiting times and we all are across the world right now pause yeah. and but in the middle of the pause god can do amazing things and mm -hmm. and i would say from my time with me there is nobody that is going to talk you out of god being faithful mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right yeah. would you say that's that's right yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, I kind yeah. of feel like I went on a quest and I had to, you know, I had to just face that dragon. Mm -hmm. And you're right. You know, it, it's like I, I was able to be part of the adventure of seeing God take me around a corner into something so wonderful and so beautiful and fulfilling. Not that long after it felt like all was lost yeah. and and all were, all is lost all is lost is a lie yeah it's a lie mm -hmm. it's a deception right That's and we good. can give into it but all is not lost mm -hmm. when god is there that's so good there's so another good. One that i want to mention melody you touched on it um but that gal that was your assistant when you when you started at the school back when you were subbing and then mm -hmm. she became your assistant in your classroom um that was the prayer warrior would you say that that relationship with her uh, made a difference in um just this whole process of what amazing things god did absolutely and and god put her where she was so when i started at that school i you know, I, like I said, what does a nice girl like me do in a place like this? But yeah. there was a little group of teachers who were meeting once a week to pray together. Mm -hmm. And so I got invited to that. That's how I met Carol. And Carol was a special ed assistant mm -hmm. in a classroom. And she, her philosophy was, all you do is just love the kids and God will yeah. do the rest. Mm. And so the principal mm. approached me about taking a job and that school was so desperate for teachers. He gave yeah. me my choice of three different jobs. Mm. I wasn't qualified for any of them actually, <laughs> but he said, here, you could take this one. And so I said, you know, I kind of threw it out there and said, if you'll give me Carol for my assistant, then I'll do the special ed job. And he said I could get a special ed credential while I was working. So what do you know? He moved her around and gave her to me. And she was the one who taught me how to handle a special ed classroom. Yeah. And also she said, let's just, let's just see what the Lord is going to do. And mm. so 
I, um, you know, I prayed and, you know, it was, it was kind of like I was supposedly in charge, but she was secretly, you know, telling me all these things. Now you do this and you do this. Cause I, I didn't really know what, what to do for yeah. that classroom, yeah. but the focus on prayer. And I used to then say it was kind of like Ethel and Lucy because, <laughs> um, and for those who are young, you may not know who that is, but I love Lucy. Crazy couple. <laughs> Right. He would, she would do, you know, she was this game for anything as long yeah. as God was in it. So mm -hmm. later when we started the after school program, she was there. And then later when we started a prison ministry, I dragged her along and she said, okay, we'll go. And we prayed mm -hmm. and we got other people to pray. And now she, she just fell in love with those kids. She retired mm -hmm. from her work at the school and she launched into a prison ministry which was under cloud and fire for oh seven or eight years mm -hmm. and then she took it on its own and she is now a chaplain at the twin towers prison in la oh, and amazing. she can go into any prison in california wow. she does bible correspondence courses oh my goodness i mean she is really something but it all started with her just you know taking her and taking me under her wing and they just love the kids and it'll work out. Yeah. And isn't it cool that that's what it started out as that that's what it, it just started out as just love these kids. And then God opened up all these other doors for you to touch so many more lives than just the kids. I love how he, I love how he takes us step by step so that we're not overwhelmed. If when you said we can't see the whole picture for a reason, because if we saw the whole picture, there's no way we would step into it. That's right. Really, there's no way mm -hmm. we would be we would be too afraid and we would feel too uh, unprepared or unequipped. But he yeah. equips us by doing it in stages, and I love that. Was there a moment that yeah. you that you kind of had an aha moment, like, um, where you? where you realized that he was going to really take you somewhere, you know what I mean? Or was it just like a natural progression? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like all along the way, all I did was walk up to doorknobs and wiggle them to see mm -hmm. if they would open. Yeah. And, and, I grew mm -hmm. up in a family mm -hmm. that says, you know, if you don't like it, change it. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of started with me as the part, you know, that cries out for justice and equity yeah. for the underdog and all that kind of thing. So it was just, how can I help these kids? You know, somebody's mm -hmm. got to do it. And when you say somebody's got to do something, it's most likely you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Kim, I want to tell you something on the flip side of that. I did have a big aha moment and it was, we've had, oh, I think maybe six, six marriages, maybe more, maybe seven marriages that have arisen out of our ministry, mm -hmm. um, either participants or wow. volunteers or staff members who have gotten married. And one of mm. the kids who was in my first classroom. So he was an 11 year old sixth grader mm -hmm. and um, he later became my son. <laughs> um, he married one of our staff members and at our, at that, at that wedding reception, I looked around, we took a picture of all the cloud and fire people. It was one yeah. of his family photos and there were almost 60 of us there. Wow, that's amazing. And at that moment, that was about four years ago, I looked around that wedding reception and, um, you know, it was like six mm -hmm. degrees of separation, except it was yeah. two degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. Everybody there, except for her college friends, mm -hmm. were all in some way connected to cloud and fire. It's amazing. And, you know, yeah. there were a couple hundred people there. And I, I just thought, the Lord built this house yeah. and you know there's there's a scripture in yeah. isaiah that says the the children of the barren woman hmm. are more are more 
And I, I just looked around and I said, when I was in that sick bed, wow. crying out to the Lord and saying, I'll never be a mother. Hmm. I could not envision yeah. that. And I felt like almost everybody at that wedding, I had mothered in some way or another. Mm. Mm. That's so great. That beautiful. That's great. Wow. I, I had a question, Melody, about, um, you mentioned God talking to you um, about how you will never have children of your own, your own, but you will have spiritual babies and, and God definitely mm -hmm. blessed you. How, how, do you. how do you know when God speaks to you and, and what are ways that God yeah. does speak to you? Good question. You know, I, I have a friend, another prayer warrior friend who I think she's so wise and, and she's always said, God speaks to each person the way they need it. Mm -hmm. So my friend Carol, mm -hmm. that, you know, who was my assistant in, in the classroom, she's very flowery. And the Lord, you know, gives her these exotic words and pictures and dreams. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's always got some, you know, very spiritual Mary kind of a moment where she sits at the master's feet and it yeah. just sort of oozes into her. And I'm kind of, you know, the Lord kind of speaks to me like, go, you know, here, <laughs> here's the marching orders, go, go do it. And, and so for me, it's hard because I sometimes want the Lord to speak to me the way he speaks to somebody else. Yeah. And and I think mm -hmm. I've learned over time that the Lord and I have a certain kind of relationship that may be different than your relationship with sure. him. And, mm -hmm. and so Sarah, mm -hmm. short answer, I don't always know that yeah. the Lord is speaking to me. Sometimes I, you know, I have to just go, Lord, you know, I, I sometimes need a two by four across the head, you mm -hmm. know, like I want the neon. Sun. Yeah, I'll do. That's, yeah. That's why the, the name of our ministry was cloud and fire. You know, I want the giant cloud in the sky to direct me, but I feel like so often it's just a little whisper. It's just mm -hmm. a little nudge. Mm -hmm. It's just a little tug. Mm -hmm. And then I think the Lord actually reveals that that was him when we take the step of faith. Mm -hmm. and, Thank and, you. Well, Kim's going to, um, yeah. Go Melody. Uh, well, we, we, it's so hard. It's so hard to stop. Gonna wrap yeah. us up. Yep. Kim's going to wrap us up. Melody. Um, yeah, I just, um, I didn't really practice how to wrap this up, but thank you for, for coming and being with us. Um, I think people are going to get a lot out of this. I hope, I hope people will tune in and watch. Um, but I think there's a lot there to, to chew on. And I think it would be fun maybe sometime to come back the three of us and talk again sometime about, um, about, you know, some things in a little bit more detail, maybe melody, if you'd be willing to do that. Of course. Um, Thank you guys really for fun. asking me. Yeah, Aww. this is, this is a totally new thing, but we are having fun. So, um, <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for being with us, and um, we're going to say goodbye before they kick us off, and um, we just want to bless everybody. Thank you for, for joining us, and um, you can message us with any questions that you have, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Melody. Okay. Thank you.